Hello, good day viewers. As part of our lesson for solving second order linear non homogeneous differential equations by the method of undetermined coefficients, here is our second problem. Remember, previously we have solved a problem in which the right hand side is an algebraic function, but today you can see it is a trigonometric function. And the general solution is given by y, which is a function of x, to be equal to y sub h plus y sub p, where y sub h is the general solution to the homogeneous type, and that can only be obtained by setting the right hand side to be equal to zero, while y sub p is the particular solution, which depends on the nature of the right hand side. You know, this is our g of x. So now let me guide you through on how to find y sub h and y sub p. To find y sub h, we are going to set the right hand side to be equal to zero, then solve for the homogeneous equation. We have y double prime plus y equal to zero. This is now homogeneous. Next, we are going to transform this equation into an auxiliary equation by setting y double prime to be equal to r squared. And uh, we have to set y prime to be r, but y prime is absent. We only have y and we are going to set y to be equal to 1 because the power is reducing by 1. And this is equal to 0. This is now a quadratic equation in which we have to find the roots of this equation. And the nature of the roots will determine the general solution of this homogeneous differential equation. So now let us take positive 1 to the right. We have r squared equal to negative 1 and r will be equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1 and you can see r is equal to either positive i or r equal to negative i but you know the general form is going to be r1 equal to alpha plus beta i and r2 equal to alpha minus beta i so we can write this one as this one is r1, this is r2. r1 is equal to 0 because alpha is absent. Plus 1i, you don't have to put the coefficient. We have i. O r2 equal to 0 minus i. So if you relate the two, you can see alpha is 0 here, while beta is equal to 1. So alpha is equal to 0, and beta is equal to 1. And you know, if you obtain a complex solution, the general solution to the homogeneous type is given as y sub h equals e to the alpha x, the u multiplied by a constant, we call it c1, cos of beta x, then you add another constant, c2, sine of beta x so now let us substitute for alpha and beta in this equation and i'm going to write it here for future use so y sub h is equal to you know alpha is zero so substituting zero here we have e to the power of zero which is equal to one so therefore the whole of this exponential function is gone we only have a constant c1 cos beta is 1 so we only have x then plus another constant c2 uh, beta is also 1 we have sine sine x so this is the homogeneous solution now let us go for the particular solution let me take this down so now you can see the right hand side is a trigonometric function which is a cosine x i remember in our introduction i've highlighted all the forms of y sub p depends on the nature of the right hand side since it is cosine x we are going to choose y sub p to be equal to a constant and this time around we're going to call it a multiply by cos of x then we add another constant b multiply by sine sine x but if you observe, y sub p is exactly the same thing as y sub h. So this one is not going to work. If you have y sub p equivalent to y sub h, 
you're going to attach x to each of these steps. So instead of a cosine x, we are going to replace it with ax cosine x. And this one as also, we write bx sine x. So what do we do next? We are going to take the first derivative of this function, y prime of p to be equal to, now you can see we have two functions, algebraic and trigonometric. So we are going to apply product rule. So let ax be a term on its own and cosine x be another term. So let us keep ax constant and differentiate cosine x and we are going to obtain negative sine x. So let the negative be here and we have sine x. Then we add. Now we are going to keep cosine x constant and differentiate ax and x will go leaving only a. So we have a cosine x. Let's move on to the other one. Bx constant, you differentiate sine x, you get cosine x. You add again. Now you keep sine x constant, you differentiate bx, and you have b um, sine, sine x. Next, you take the second derivative as well. Y double prime of p equal to from here you can see we are going to take negative ax as constant and differentiate sine x so we have negative ax cosine x then now we're going to keep this one constant and differentiate this if you differentiate this you get negative a but we have this constant sine x moving on uh, we have a cosine x, if you differentiate it, you get negative a sine x. Let's move on. You keep bx constant. Uh, you differentiate this, but this is going to become negative. So this becomes negative bx sine x. Uh, now you keep cosine x constant. You differentiate bx, you have b cosine x and lastly if you differentiate this you have b cosine x all right so what is next we are going to substitute these three information into the original equation y double prime you can see we have it here as um, negative a x cosine x minus a sine x minus a sine x minus b x sine x plus b cos x plus b cos x then we have y to be a x cosine x plus a x cosine x then um, plus b x plus bx sine x. We are going to set the whole of this to be equal to cosine x. So now let us collect the like terms. All those with ax cosine x, let me see. ax cosine x, let's find another ax cosine x. You can see we have ax cosine x. This is negative, this is positive, so they will take care of each other. Now let me find bx sine x we have bx sine x this is negative this is positive so they will take care of each other so you can see these terms are exactly the same these two terms are also exactly the same so let us collect them minus a sine x minus a sine x is minus 2 a sine x b cosine x b cosine x we have 2 b cosine x and to the right hand side we have one cosine x for a reason one cosine x so what do we do we want to solve for a and b by relating the coefficients we don't have any sine x to the right therefore the coefficient is set to be equal to zero this means that minus 2a 
which is the coefficient of sine x to the left, will be equal to the coefficient of sine x to the right, which is 0. This implies that a is equal to 0. Then you can see the coefficient of cosine x to the left is 2b, 2b, and the coefficient of cosine x to the right is 1. What does this mean? It implies that b is equal to 1 over 2. b is equal to 1 over 2. Now, having obtained the values of a and b, we can now plug them back into y sub p. And you can see this is our y sub p. After that, we add to y sub h. Uh, that is our general solution. So from here, y sub p is equal to a. a is 0, so the whole of this term equal to 0. All we have is bx sine x. And b is 1 over 2. 1 over 2x sine sine x. So you can see we have y sub h and y sub p, and this is the general solution. We have the general solution y to be equal to y sub h is c1 cosine x plus c2 sine sine x plus y sub p is now 1 over 2x sine x. So this is the general solution to this second order linear non-homogeneous differential equation. And this is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Do have a nice day.